Buongiorno a tutti, mi chiamo Charlotte e oggi studiamo sei espressioni idiomatiche um, con le parti del corpo in italiano, chiaramente. <laughs> Hello everyone, today we'll be looking at six Italian expressions which use vocab uh, talking about parts of the body or a part of the body. So this is for my Italian um, language club which takes place once a month, every first Tuesday of the month, members get a handout which looks like this, that gets sent to your email and you also have a link to this video. Um, so you can study what I'm looking at and complete um, some exercises and then follow some links which will take you to further reading on the topic discussed in the video. So if you're interested in joining my Italian club or even one of my other clubs, my French club, then please get in touch, feel free, you can find the information underneath this video. Ok, andiamo! Si! Ok, so the first expression is written out behind me here. So, um, if you watch my last video, you might remember the word occhio. Occhio. Un occhio. Gli occhi eyes, un occhio, an eye in English, okay? So, non chiudere un occhio. Cosa vuol dire? <laughs> vuol dire non dormire affatto durante la notte, okay? Non dormire affatto durante la notte. That means not being able to sleep at all during the night. Okay, and so in English we have a translation for this. So I've put some um, approximate or common translations in on here for you. So we do have a kind of equivalent, which is um, not to sleep a wink. Okay, so this is a wink in English for anyone who isn't a native English speaker. And so if you say I didn't sleep a wink last night, that means you didn't sleep at all. In Italian you could say non ho chiuso un occhio stanotte. Stanotte non ho chiuso un occhio. I didn't shut one eye, I didn't shut my eye, like I didn't sleep at all. Okay? So we have here the verb chiudere, which means to shut or to close, and that can be used for your eyes, or it could be used for closing a book, or closing a window or a door or it could also be used for like shops okay chiudere so they shut or they close at a certain time and the past participle chiuso can be used as well um, to say whether something is open or shut like a little sign on the door chiuso it's shut or it's closed so there's two verbs in English chiudere c and an i K, and then a, uh, sorry, a C and an H, <laughs> making that K sound in Italian, followed by an I, that makes a chi, and then it's got a U after that I, so chiudere, chiudere, eccolo qua, and the past participle is chiuso, okay, Excellent. Now, um, you can use that adjective as well to describe things that are closed. Um, porte chiuse, for example. You could change, if, if you're talking about something like a noun, well, plural noun, le porte sono chiuse, then as the usual, this adjective, <laughs> which is also the past participle, it's the same word, it looks the same. The ending changes in agreement with the noun that you're describing. So, una porta chiusa. Le porte sono chiuse, for example. So, non chiudere. Non chiudere means to not close or not to close. Non chiudere un occhio. And again, you have that double, or a, you do have a double C, <laughs> but you have a C and an H, which is a K sound. Occhio. Okay? Last time I mentioned Pinocchio. Pinocchio, as many English speakers would pronounce it, which means pine eye. 
like a wooden eye, like a little wooden toy. So Pinocchio uh, has the word I in his name. Okay, and that's how you pronounce it, Pinocchio. So, number two, numero due. Mettere la mano sul fuoco. Now, I had to have a good think about this and a little look online to try and find an equivalent that used a body part. So, when you're translating things into a different language, it's nice to keep elements of it that are similar um, to kind of <laughs> approximate it as much as possible to its counterpart in a different language. So, I couldn't think for a while. So, I have got something now though. So, mettere la mano sul fuoco is when you are willing to vouch for someone or to guarantee uh, something. Or maybe you could use in certain instances to swear, like I swear, or I guarantee, or I vouch for. So, they're all to do with uh, reliability <laughs> or a prediction of an outcome. But what I found, which was quite nice, um, which had a similar kind of theme, let me just find where the translation is. I've made a note of it somewhere. Uh, oh, in fact, I've changed it in the text. So, here's an example. So, this is the Italian kind of uh, a definition or an explanation. Essere molto sicuro di qualcuno o di qualcosa. To be very sure of someone or something. Essere molto sicuro di qualcuno. To be sure of someone o di qualcosa. Or of something. So it's to do with certainty, okay? So here is uh, an example. Luisa passerà l'esame. Ci metto la mano sul fuoco. La mano, remember the ha a hand, so I'll put my hand, sul fuoco, fuoco is fire. So essentially, literally you're saying, I put my hand in a fire, <laughs> you know, I'm so certain of something that I would do something crazy um, to show you how certain I am. So this is the nice little equivalent, Louisa will pass the exam, I would bet my right arm on it. In fact, that's the left arm. <laughs> I would bet, or I bet my right arm on it. Or in English, you could use the future. I will bet my right arm on it. So, ci metto la mano sul fuoco. La mano, fuoco is fire, and the verb is mettere, which means to put or to place something. And in English, you could say to bet my right arm something but it, it could also be to to guarantee or I, I guarantee it you know she will pass the exam I guarantee it so um, here is the main verb mettere another ere verb actually um, la mano is uh, feminine noun la mano in the plural this looks like le mani okay so this is a bit irregular in the plural it becomes le as you might expect, mani. Mano becomes mani, but it keeps the uh, feminine plural article. So here, un occhio becomes gli occhi. And so this meant um, to guarantee something. Guarantee. And this one here would be uh, to not sleep, he wink. So, in the English version, the verb is to sleep, and the noun is a wink, which is that little action there. <laughs> this is a blink, for anyone who's not an English native, and that's a wink. Um, and here we've got to put your hand, to put mettere being the main verb. But in English you might say, I guarantee it, or I bet my right arm, okay, to bet one's right arm. There might be some other nice little idioms that correspond to that, but the bet my right arm was quite nice because it had, like I said, the, the corporal, the body link. Okay, I'll just zoom in there so you might be able to see that. 
to guarantee or to bet one's right arm. So, essere il braccio destro. <laughs> ecco mio braccio destro. Okay. This is very, well, it's basically word for word. Well, it's almost, yeah, right hand, yeah, okay. So, essere il braccio destro di qualcuno. Qualcuno literally means someone. <laughs> Uno. <laughs> so, we're talking about being someone's, being someone's, not right arm, but someone's right hand man. Okay, or right hand woman, if you like. So, um, let's give you a nice little um, definition here in Italian. Essere il braccio destro di qualcuno vuol dire, significa essere il principale collaboratore di qualcuno. Okay, so someone's main collaborator, your right hand man, someone you can trust and rely upon, someone who helps you for things, okay? So the person you go to for help or assistance or for your job, etc. So in English, we would say right hand man or woman. But in Italian, it's the right arm, okay? <laughs> so um, let's see. Uh, just make sure you can see that. To be, that's the same verb, to be, someone's, with an apostrophe S because it's the possessive in English. In Italian, that's di qualcuno, <laughs> the something of someone, i.e. someone's something. Okay, it's kind of inverted. Uh, right hand, now I would tend to put a hyphen there because those two together create like an adjective, a descriptive phrase of its own. Right right hand is two words. <laughs> hand is a noun, right is an adjective, if you like, when it's describing the hand. And um, together they make like a compound noun. Right hand, man or woman. Right hand, man. Maybe not everyone would do this, but some people might say he's she's my right hand man. Okay, not everyone would correct man to woman, but there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, you know. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be uncommon to hear right hand man or right hand woman if you're talking about a lady. Woman. Destra sinistra. So here we've got. Uh, Destro, okay, which agrees with braccio. Il braccio, il braccio. So that is, that word braccio <laughs> is masculine in the singular, but becomes feminine in the plural. Yeah, that's weird, isn't it? So in the plural, it becomes, so this is something we looked at in our last uh, video, my last video. So uh, il braccio Heel changes to le and braccio with an o at the end becomes le braccia. Le braccia. Weird, isn't it? I know. Non so perché, ma è così. Allora, va bene. Essere il braccio destro di qualcuno. So here's an example. Davide è il braccio destro di o oh, del capo. Okay. Uh, Davide è il braccio destro del capo. David is the boss's right hand man. Okay? It's quite nice, isn't it, that one? So we've got the verb essere, and we've got the noun, the body part, il braccio, which becomes le braccia in the plural. Chiudere, to shut all the clothes. Un occhio becomes gli occhi. And mettere la mano, la mano, sul fuoco means to guarantee or to be certain of somebody. And um, you could say, um, I bet my right arm on it in English. Ci metto la mano sul fuoco. And la mano becomes le mani in the plural. It's quite a lot to remember there. Let's look at the next three. Eccoli. Okay, 
let's see okay so I can see myself there so here we have something which also has quite a close equivalent in English alzarsi ecco alzarsi con il piede sbagliato il il piedi il piede scusa sbagliato now con il means with the or with the depending on how you pronounce the or the in English but that can appear sometimes as col which is also the preposition it just means with the con plus il can appear sometimes as col so you might see that written in one of two ways okay or here it said col instead of con il okay it just depends be aware of it alzarsi cosa significa alzarsi vuol dire to get up as in you wake up then you get up <laughs> si sveglia e poi si alza okay so this is a reflexive verb that's why we've got si at the end of it that just means oneself alzare is to raise or to lift in English, so it's to lift or get oneself up. <laughs> in English, we just say get up, okay? And we think about either getting up from a chair or getting up from our bed and starting to walk around to get on with our day. So it's about getting up. Alzarsi con il piede sbagliato. Il piede. Scusa, il piede. Il piede ends with an E, so I need to pronounce that E. Piede. Sbagliato means wrong, okay? So wrong or incorrect or erroneous, if you like, okay? Not the right one. <laughs> so are you thinking what I'm thinking here? To get, up, to get up on the wrong side of bed. So we don't really have an equivalent that means the same thing, not that I can think of, in English. We would say, for example, oh, he got up on the wrong side of bed this morning. That means someone maybe is in a bad mood or is not having a great day or is a bit grumpy. <laughs> and you can see it, okay? So it's as if they got up, maybe got off to a wrong start at the beginning of their day. So in English, we would say, uh, yeah, to wake up. We might say to get up, to wake up. On, he woke up on the wrong side of bed. I think you can either say to wake up, to wake up, or to get up. Sometimes I question myself, I kind of forget what we say in English. <laughs> so if you have like a preference or you think I'm wrong about something, put it in the comments and then we'll discuss, okay? Because sometimes it's hard to get all this out flawlessly in a one take video to wake up on the wrong side of bed to get up I think it is and that's what alzarsi means okay but you might say to wake up because they're so close you know in meaning and use um to get up on the wrong side of bed so we talk about the bed the bed is the main noun in the English one but in Italian it's il piede which is the foot Okay, and sbagliato means wrong or incorrect. There's also another one which is quite similar in content, if you like, in English. To get off on the wrong foot, okay? We got off on the wrong foot means that we um, misunderstood each other. With, this is about people's relationships. Like, oh, I think we got off on the wrong foot. That means the, our... <laughs> Our relationship has um, started poorly. Let's start again. We've misunderstood each other. So even though wrong foot, il, il piede sbagliato, sounds almost the same, it's not the same meaning, okay? Alzarsi con il piede sbagliato. So um, here, <laughs> the, uh, another way of explaining that in Italian could be essere di cattivo umore. To be in a bad mood, <laughs> okay? Cattivo, bad. Umore, mood, okay? 
So here's an example. Oggi il capo è intrattabile. Si sarà alzato con il piede sbagliato. So the boss is in a bad mood today. He will have or he must have got up on the wrong side of bed. Okay? Il piedi becomes i piedi. Uh, just a nice uh, regular masculine plural. So here we have uh, piede, which ends with an e. Sometimes singular nouns in Italian end with an e. And then in the plural, they end with an i. So that goes to i piedi. Now that word piede, you first of all, <laughs> if you saw last month's video, um, you'll remember that head, shoulders, knees and toes in Italian is actually heads, testa, spalle, shoulders, knees, ginocchia, and feet, piedi. <laughs> so, in the plural, piedi. So, it's a little bit different. They don't say toes, they say feet. So, il piede becomes i piedi. Okay? Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. Um, essere senza cuore. Senza cuore. So, senza can often appear before a noun. Okay? In English, we would say to be heartless. Heartless. As in someone who is devoid of feeling or empathy. Okay? To be heartless. Cruel, maybe. Okay? Or just without, without empathy. Okay, that kind of thing. So, senza cuore, um, to be heartless. So, very simple. Uh, not something you'd really want to say about someone unless you really mean it, you know. You're being serious if you say that or if you hear it. So, um, to be heartless. Senza plus a noun. Um, uh, Senza caffeine. Without, like, oh, it can also mean free. Let me just look at some examples. So, like uh, senza zucchero, sugar free. Um, let's think, sugar free. Yeah, again, that's another compound noun, hyphenated in English. But senza zucchero. Yeah, senza. What else might you have? Um, just looking for examples here. See, okay, so if you had <coughs> uh, sugar free, like sugar free, I don't know, tea, mint, coffee, whatever, senza zucchero, or you could have, these are completely different, <laughs> like you don't use them obviously when you're talking about a person, but if you're talking about a beverage or food, these are common. Senza plus a noun forms that you might encounter. They're also quite useful to know. Now, I was just checking double F, yeah. Yeah, of course it's double F because caffè. Nella parola caffè, ci sono due F. Caffeina. So, senza plus a noun just means without something. Or in English, we say sugar free, caffeine free. Okay? But you don't say heart free, you say heart less. Heart less. So senza can mean without, or it can sometimes translate as a word with less, or um, a word and then free with a hyphen. Okay? So it can be any of those. Okay, let's have a look at the last one. This is a nice one. <laughs> I like this one. I think it's funny. Um, averne fin sopra i capelli. I capelli. Ecco. I capelli. I capelli miei sono lunghi, scuri, etc. I capelli. So we're talking about hair, as in on someone's head. It's plural in Italian. I capelli. That's the first thing which might throw an English language speaker. You think about hair, you just think lots of hair. It's like one word, even though there's loads of hairs. In Italian, individual hairs, okay? So it's plural. Plurale. So, averne, to have it fin. Fin, like from fino. 
fino means about oh no fino means like up and up until it means until okay so fin is like a short form of fino sometimes fino can be followed by the preposition a so if you might see this i think erroneously written as averne fino fin ai capelli where a and i come together but i think that that's incorrect i think it should be to have it up above sopra normally means above or over i capelli so in english it translates as i've had it up to here up to here <laughs> I've had enough. Averne, <laughs> averne abbastanza to have enough. Okay, so there's an equivalent which is also the same in English, to just not be able to put up with something anymore, to have had your fill of someone's nonsense or rubbish or something. Okay, so, so in English that would be to have it up to. That's the fin uh, here. So normally that's marked by a gesture. I've had it up to here. <laughs> we don't do many gestures in English, but that is one that I think a lot of people would say. You can't really say I've had it up to here with her and not do the gesture because you're like, up to where? Okay, but i capelli, that marks it out. Up to the top of my head, you know, right up to the top, up here. So um, let's have a look. Another way, a nice little uh, explanation in Italian. Non tollerare qualcosa o essere stanco di una situazione. So, to not tolerate something or to be tired of a situation. Okay, so that's the same meaning, um, but it's got the body part, i capelli. So, let's see. Um, hmm. Okay, here's one. Ne ho fin sopra i capelli con tutto quel rumore di vicini. Ne ho avuto fin sopra i capelli. O ne ho fin sopra i capelli con tutto quel rumore di vicini. <laughs> so I've had up to here. I've had enough with all that noise from the neighbours, all the neighbours' noise. I've lived next to some noisy neighbours and you can quite easily get to that point where you've had enough. Averne abbastanza. So, um, if you say that you have enough of something, um, you could say um, o, ne o, so we've got this little, that's an N kind of um, little pronoun here which means enough of something so I'm just thinking you could say ne ho ne ho fin sopra i capelli del rumore I've had enough of the noise so whenever you see ne it tends to be replacing the preposition di so um, o uh, fin sopra i capelli di o fin of terra right, fino o fin sopra i capelli del rumore I've had enough of the noise ok ne ho fin sopra i capelli del rumore I've had enough of that noise so we've seen Averne, to have enough of something, or to have something, okay, di averne. Um, like you might see that with neo abbastanza, I have enough of it, okay, um, or ne ho avuto abbastanza. This is something for another video altogether because seeing that at the end of avere with the e clipped off might be a bit confusing. But also, I think merits another video, a couple uh, into the future, because I've got some more expressions I'd like to look at with body vocab, okay? But yeah, look out for that. Fin sopra i capelli. Fin plus sopra, I find a little bit unusual for like an English native, because fin looks like up to, 
um, but sopra after fin I've had it up to above my hair if you like sounds a little bit strange but that's part of the expression so averne to have enough of or to have something of something else Esser is to be alzarsi is to get up but it can be translated sometimes, maybe erroneously, as to wake up on the wrong side of bed. It literally means to raise oneself or to get oneself up. Chiudere, to close. A door, a window, a book, your eyes, a shop. Mettere, to put or to place. And again, essere. So we've seen un occhio, la mano, Il braccio destro, okay, the left, the, the right hand or the right arm, scusa. Uh, il piede. Ah, okay, I didn't point out that cuore is another masculine noun that ends with an e. So il cuore, like il piede, okay. Um, and then i capelli is hair. Okay, so I'll take that out of here for now and I'm just going to check um, a couple of little words with you. So, di cattivo umore. Che cosa significa questa frase? Di cattivo umore. So that's something I used in my definition of one of the expressions. Di cattivo umore. So that means in a bad mood, <laughs> used to describe someone. <clears throat> uh, and which is the expression, if you remember, that uses um, or that means to be in a bad mood? It starts off like this. Alzarsi, that means to get up. Now I'm going to put this with, um, I think, col. Col, and then in brackets, con il, to get up with the, okay, remember there's two ways of writing that, piede sbagliato, sbagliato, okay, the wrong foot, and the adjective goes after the noun, and it agrees here, sbagliato, with an O at the end, tells you that piede is a masculine singular noun. So, that means to be essere di cattivo umore. Umore, umore means like a mood, someone's humour, I suppose. Okay, let's see. Um, ah, this actually rhymes with this one. Il rumore. What was that word? That was mentioned in an example. Ne ho avuto fin sopra i capelli con tutto quel rumore dei vicini. I've had it up to here with the noise of the neighbours, the neighbours' noise, or the noisy neighbours, we might say. So, umore is someone's mood, but with an R in the front, rumore, it means noise. Okay? So this is just some little bits of vocab that I'm doing a little test on. Okay, and then there's one more I want to do, which was right back at the beginning in this example. So the word is stanotte. Stanotte. Okay, now, stanotte is an adverb, I think, which places you somewhere in time. Sta notte. Now it looks like it means maybe this evening, okay? Notte means night. La notte, it's a feminine noun. Um, and sta is like a shortened form of questa. But sta notte means last night. This night that's just happened, okay? The one that just happened. <laughs> so we would say last night in English speaking places. Um, last night. Stanotte. If ever you hear someone say, um, non ho chiuso un occhio stanotte, they're talking about the night that just happened before. Okay? Non ho chiuso un occhio, non ha dormito.
they haven't slept. Hmm. Um, and if ever you hear an Italian say in English, this night, <laughs> this night, they might not mean um, questa sera, they might mean stanotte, the one that's already happened, okay? They might mean last night instead of this evening. This evening would be questa sera, or stasera, actually, stasera, okay? Questa sera, stasera, okay? Stamattina as well, this morning. Okay, let's see. So we also had some verbs. Let's just go through some of the verbs. So um, this was one in one of the like definitions. Tolerare is to tolerate or to put up with something. Essere, we know that one, to be. Uh, essere senza cuore. To be heartless. Oh, I didn't give you an example of heartless. Um, let's see. I'll just write down the example that's on here. Oh, <laughs> I just hit myself there. There's so much stuff in this little corner. The whole room's basically empty apart from this little corner. So heartless. Uh, senza cuore, quella donna, that woman or that lady, quella donna. Tratta, this is quite good actually, tratta male, I want to rub that out then, tratta male, suo cane, that lady treats poorly or treats badly, she mistreats her dog, è senza cuore, she is heartless, heartless. So that's that uh, word, senza cuore, and what was the verb? Ah, oh, yeah, to be essere. There's the verb essere in the third person singular. Then we've got alzarsi, which means to get up, get oneself up. It's reflexive. Dormire, well, that was uh, non chiudere un occhio. Non dormire is like non chiudere un occhio, not, not sleep a wink, not shut, shut an eye. Mettere is to put something down, well just to put or to place something. And chiudere can mean to shut or to close. So there you go, six new expressions for you to have a little look at and you to listen out for, you might hear them. Um, if you want to try using them, please feel free to conjugate some, some of those uh, verbs and phrases in the comments below or to ask me any questions you might have and I'll do my best to answer them. And if, again, if you want to join my Italian monthly club, just send me an email. Feel free to get in touch and I will send you all the details. It would be un piacere, a pleasure. Grazie mille, buona giornata e alla prossima volta. Ciao.